down. <laughs> Good boy. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, hi. Um, <laughs> hi. Hi. I'm Randy Jones. Hello, Randy Jones. Nice this to is my dog, you. Ace. My dog. Your dog. Whew. What's today? Tuesday, November, November 2nd. 11-2. 11 2. Because my mom's been dead for 20 years. Oh, God. Well, that's terrible. Ain't that awful? Mine's 20 been years. dead eight. Mine's not dead yet. <laughs> she keeps on a going, don't she, buddy? Ah. Good. All right. I'm good. Um, what are we doing, Amanda? Uh, well, I'm getting a little chilly. <laughs> All right. Let me take the camera. You got yeah, something to I tell got, everybody. Yeah, I got something to say. This is some really big news, everybody. It's not really big. Amanda is Did about. Did you see that? What? Is that a little thing of snow? No. It was sawdust. Look at the sky. Well, it was what? That, that beautiful this, sky is coming it's... this way. Look, Randy. How the it's clear split. sky is coming. Oh, my God. The contrast. Here, wait a minute. Let me see here. Let me zero in. See that blue sky? Listen, you see Marty over here? I've been trying to date yeah. him. Where's he at? Right here in that He hid. He's running away from here because he well, thinks listen, you want him. Show my shoes. There's Mar Marty. Okay, see my shoes? Yep, they're snakeskin. They're snakeskin. He said he, he come by here. He's got a car that I'm in love with. It's like a 280Z. Back yeah. at, what is it, like an 80? Nissan, right? Datsun? Yeah, it's a Datsun 280Z, and I love it. And uh, I've been trying to get in that car. He said, nobody's rode my car. I said, Marty's going to take me in that car. So, Marty right so there. I've been trying to get a date with him. I've been trying, And he said, you want to ride in that car? He's, he's breaking his neck to get out of here. Oh, don't start with me, Billy. Don't make me bring up what I'll bring up. Don't. Don't don't start it. Billy Billy's my other one. Okay, that's that's another day. Okay. You're tormenting them. So Marty over here's got this car, this 280Z that I want to be riding in, you know. So, but he came by, to put his tools up, and he saw my shoes. He said, "There's them snake uh, snake shoes." He said, "That'll run them off." <laughs> and I told him, and I said, "And it does." And it so, does. keeps them away, doesn't keeps it? Keeps them away. That's right. What's the news, man? Are you are you okay. quitting us? You firing? You're going to go retire? And not going to come I back no more? I wouldn't announce it. I just are you going to stay away from here forever? I just walk out. Float out. Uh, okay. Well, in our dreams. What do you got? In your dreams. Okay. So what I want to say is that uh, just want to touch. Is on... this more slimming? Is that what you'd like to be? You suck in your cheeks and you look up at the camera. Do is I that what you do be... on Facebook? Do I need to be slimming? Is that what you're saying? Not a bit, baby. <clears throat> These snakes. Okay. Pay attention. I'm good. Okay. So what I wanted to do is just tell about the women's uh, spectacular that we're going to go to. We decided that we are going to take two tiny homes to this. Um, well, it's not a festival. What's it called? It's Women's Spectacular. It's like a, I don't know, a Friday and Saturday this week. It's going to be a... Women's show. Women's show. There we go. It's a, it's a women's Everything show. Everything to do with what girls yeah, like, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to go over that real quick. But it's a Women's Spectacular. Um, it's uh, put on by WATE uh, Channel 6 News in Knoxville. They're mm -hmm. a big news station over there. Um, they've been really good to us. They invited us to come to it. We never, ever get to go to a show because we're just so busy. Can't hardly ever get. We're still busy. We're still busy. We're always busy. But, um, watch it. Watch this. Bye, Marty. Bye. Bye. Ah. Marty. Marty. And Marty tries to get away from me. Okay. Anyway, so, anyway, it's going to be, the dates are November 5th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's this Friday, okay? November 6th, which is Saturday, 9 to 7, I believe is what it is. We're going to take two tiny homes, and what they want to do is they want to set them up um, one at each entrance. So I'm assuming there's a there's two entrances there. So one at each entrance. So me and Randy will be there, and thank God we'll probably be separated, one in one house and one in the <clears> other. Yep. Thank the Lord. Suits me. Okay. So the first annual Women's Spectacular. Let me just kind of tell you a little bit about it real quick. We don't have it connected on our Facebook yet, or Facebook or the uh, website, but we'll ask Alyssa if she can do that, or Sam maybe can get that on there. Um, uh, WATE has created East Tennessee's ultimate expo for women, offering business uh, businesses a unique and entertaining informational venue, blah, blah, blah. This is the first annual. This is the very first one that they've done. So we thought maybe it's something we might want to do every year. Um, first annual expo, uh, women's expo that uh, blah, 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 given broadcast. Ah, da, 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 da. Okay, lots of stuff. Anyway, so they're going to have things like 
spa, manis and petties. You know what that is? Uh, nope. Manicure. <laughs> no. Manis and petties. Manis and petties. Oh, okay, yeah, manicure. Manicure and pedicure. Got it, got it. Auto, outdoor, eyebrow threading, hot yoga. I'll go. do that. Waxing, Botox. Oh, God. I'll do that. Massages, gifts yep. for men and family. Men don't need no gifts. I'm sorry, men. Too bad. Uh, makeovers, hair trims, soap making, DIY candles, arts and crafts. I always want to make a candle. Um, holiday decor designs, recruitment. What does that mean? They're going to recruit people? Uh, like I won't be there for that. Mm -mm. I don't know what that means. Um, bike scooters. Nice. I, oh, for women, I guess. Yeah, okay. there's a lot of people. Yeah, scooters. Okay. Facials. <clears throat> Uh, camping, picnics. I want all that stuff. Okay, okay. Could you let the women have something? God, God you got to have your nose and everything. Picnics, <sighs> uh, flower trucks. What's a flower truck? A truck with flowers. Okay. Um, candy bakery, personalized lettering, gift wrapping, cleaning, cleaning supplies and products, jewelry. Nope. Jewelry. Pass. Wine tasting. Billy, he's a... It's another story. Uh, wine tasting, fashion boutiques, male and family clothing, mm. uh, cooking, cooking in person, fitness, wow. and more. And that's going to be cool. And yep. two tiny homes. And so, two tiny two homes. Tiny homes. That's so going to be great. We're going to take a, a nine by twenty-two. You want to give a glance? Look. Just, just a quick. Careful. This that one. one right there. Yeah. And we got another. And we're going to take um, a. I don't know if they can hear me. Oh. And we're going to take a 10 by 20 ESP home. Yeah. So anyway, so I just wanted to, let me just remind you one time again, this Friday and Saturday, this weekend, it's the Women's Spectacular, uh, the ver first annual November 5th and 6th. On Friday, it's 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. And on Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And Randy and I will be there. So, oh, they're <sighs> also going to do, um, they're going to do a live interview that we're going to post, okay? Yeah. The live interview, and I think they're going to do a 30-second commercial. Him and his camera. Uh, I'm just dang. trying to get you where you want to, you know. We're off what, Randy? Where you... We're what? You look... Let's hear what he says. You look... Where I look what? Beautiful. <sighs> Y'all don't know. Okay, so anyways. You done? This Friday and Saturday, that's all I wanted to say. Are that's all it? hearts and minds clear? <laughs> <laughs> Well, show us the house. Where are we going? Okay. Now, I don't want to show Where's the house. show going? No, I don't know. You're going to do that. Okay. Ah, all right. Tiny house person. <laughs> Good. Billy, I'm watching you. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. So, where are we going? Man, they cleaned up. It looks really nice. Yep. Yep, it does. <laughs> Look at the wind key I have on it. This is our security patroller. Security. Security. Let me show the front. We've showed this before, but. Incredible tiny home security. Yep. So if you come here and you see this, this is Mark that, tra that travels in. Yep. Randy, it has a dump well, bed. Well, it says right here, Incredible Tiny Home Security. Yeah. It's got a dump bed. Yep. And this is what everybody uses the shopping carts for. Yeah. They don't want to drive down in here because there's so many screws and nails there right he here is. where we work. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they walk back to their vehicles. Yeah. And we got Lowe's have just dumped off, I bet you, a dozen <laughs> shopping carts. Yeah, buggies. Yeah. We use them for plumbing, electrical, yeah. getting around the place. It's been really good to use. Yeah. They got shopping carts all over here. Now, do you remember whenever we would go to the store or something and I'd say, get a buggy, and you called it a cart? Yep. Down in south, they call it a buggy. Up home, they call it a, a cart. They called it a shopping, cart. A shopping, shopping cart. cart. We don't say that. Yeah. And that's no. something. Yeah. So, all right. I had, a, I had an opportunity yesterday of a, um, was it yesterday? The producer come in? Yes, yeah. yesterday. So I had a, a producer come in there, just wanted to kind of interview us, me, whatever the company and all that. And um, so what was really neat is I've had this done half a dozen times where they say, hey, we'd like to see what you got. And I don't know, maybe it'll be something they can use later on, I don't know. But what, what happens is they ask me a lot of questions 
about who I am, where I come from, what happened, how'd you get here, and all this stuff, and you go through. So a lot of times we work so much, I don't ever think about, you know, where we came from and how we got here, mm -hmm. and then where are we going, and why are we doing what we're doing, right. and you ask all them serious questions because, you know, every day runs into the next and the next. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really hard for me to, because uh, when I started thinking about it, you know, what I'm doing here is just, we're just building homes and it took off where we're building more than one at a time like I was doing of course and and now we've got a lot of people involved and uh I'm still I don't I don't know how to say this is that that uh you know if if you walk out your door in the morning and you think about what people are going to criticize you with and tell you how to run your life and do your business you'll never go out the door. No. Okay, so when I'm on this, I'm, my mind is constantly thinking about the man or woman or the person that is gonna criticize what I'm about to say, what I'm doing, where I'm at, and what I'm going and everything, you know? And and I don't live that way at all. I don't, I, I come to work and I do my best and I do what I'm gonna do and I run the business like the way I wanna run it. And I try to get advice and learn and, and try to educate myself to be a better person and a businessman. Um, but when I build your home, it opens the door for a lot of criticism, you know? And so it, and I've had that, but I've never had it as much as I've had it in my life right now because I've been a builder for 30 years. And uh, usually it's one, two houses at a time, regular stick built houses on a foundation. And uh, I loved building, I always did. And I, and I still do love the, actually the craftsmanship. So they asked me, they said, what do you like about these homes? And I remember I was up in Minnesota and we were uh, tutoring the guys to, you know, we were up there, I stayed a week and Barry's, Barry was an awesome guy. He's still finishing up the, the Minnesota home, which should be done in about two or three weeks. His son asked me about being burnt out. And I've said this before, but I used that in the interview. And I said, he goes, what, what keeps you from being burnt out, Randy? Five, six, you know, hundred homes later. And I said, I still really enjoy watching a home be built. I like seeing the bare bones trailer go up to a home that looks really pretty and out the door and a homeowner happy yeah the only thing that that it's causing is that you know when you get into a business and you build multiple homes then you got so many people building homes and now you got to watch them and then the quality and the speed and the timing and the money and it's just all that's included in this it's not you don't have that tight grip on it that i'm personally doing it myself but we got a great team of guys here we just have a meeting in the mornings we have a meeting in the evenings this is what i've always wanted to have these men involved or I'm not alone and I got a team that wants what I want. And I think that's where we're, we're there and now we're just perfecting we that. Yeah. And it, I can't tell you the, the, uh, the amount of stress it takes off of me and the enjoyment that it gives me even more, more likelihood to want to continue in this company when you've got somebody that's helping you take that load, you know? So I want to I want to just tell everybody right now the one thing that I'm I'm going I'm starting to eliminate is if we're building your home and I know a lot of people I've become friends with that I'm building your home but you we're going to have to you know can't text me anymore and the reason is is because I'm just so busy doing so many other things and I love getting texts from people but I'm not able to transfer when I get a text I look at it and there's three other people talking the phone's ringing and then we're I'm handing you know blueprints and making adjustments and people's asking me a question what I've got to do and I've got somebody waiting outside I'll read the text and I go on mm -hmm. and what's happening is we're not getting back to those texts hey don't hey by the way put a 36 inch shower instead of a 32 in my house and it, it just can't work that I way. just can't do it no. so if you guys will just send any texts to uh, send an email mm -hmm. to the company, give them a call, and whatever you need to do. That's the form, form, you well, know, formal if, if way of doing any kind of information. If you know? you're a customer, you'll do co-construct. Yeah. That, and Amber answers all the co-construct questions. And I hate that, but it's a part of being the team. It's a company. Yeah, the team is doing, we have now turned into a, you know, it's a company, and the company runs a whole lot better than just me. You know, the, the people that we have in place, everything that's going on right here is what, makes this place run efficiently are we perfect oh my god no no we're not but we're trying and all i can say is we're going to keep trying and trying and trying and i have talked today we had 21st mortgage come in yeah okay mm -hmm. so 21st mortgage came in and said hey 
you know, we're offering, did you bring that? You didn't bring that news, I did you? Bring we'll do that. it tomorrow. No, but they're offering more years on the loans now, mm -hmm. and they really don't see a downturn. You know, everybody's right. talking about the dollar bill dying and inflation going, and we don't know what's going to happen. You know, all I know is, is that, man, I still love building these tiny homes. I love how the business is becoming more organized and how we're delegating more responsibility to people, and it's, it's running better. So if you guys will, I know you're on a list to be built. We are doing all we can. I, I just can't express to you what we worked 14 and a half hours yesterday. Oh, yeah, we worked. A, it was a long day. It's yesterday. every day. We started this morning at 5:30, 6, yeah. mm -hmm. and this morning. Yeah. So it's another 12, 14 hour day. I know. And that's fine. But yeah. we love what we do. You know, I don't have little little guys at the house anymore mm -hmm. waiting on me. You know, so I've never put this many hours in into a business. Normally, you know, you're home at four or five and you raise your family, you know? So, but everything we have, we're putting into this company. So if you have any doubts about what we're doing, and I don't know why I'm, I don't want to harper on this, but 850 Industrial Road, you call up, make an appointment, be glad to talk to you and, and express to you what we have going on here or anything, you know, and try to help you understand our process and in your home. But we're stepping up our customer service, keep you guys informed about the homes, yeah, we do have a lot of homes. We have, we're, we're a successful company. People like our homes. People want our homes because we're low price and we're good quality. Mm -hmm. That means we got a lot of homes to build. Yeah. If, <clears throat> and you got it, and it's just falling in line and we got an agenda and we're building them. Yeah. So no way do we set, just sit back and not do anything. No, there's not a day for that, it's for sure. It's always going on. Yeah. Yep. So. And, it, and you might notice my I'm shaking a little. Are it's, you cold? I'm finally cold. Because it's going to be cold You're tonight. never cold. I'm, I'm the one that's cold. always cold. I'm never cold. So I'm finally cold. So we put a video out today, mm -hmm. and we were um, offering a house that's for sale. It's 49 dollars Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an 8 by 16 Craftsman. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of a different house because it's a an older home. It's been here about three years. It was custom built. and um, But it's got a lot of potential. It's a lot of volume. Big craftsman. Everything that goes with it. So if you have and seen that video, go yeah. ahead and look at it. Yeah. One of the things that we didn't add to it on this video, we did in the first video that we yeah. did, well, about the lot. Yes. We forgot to say that today, but I added it in the description. We didn't? I thought I did. I don't remember you saying it. Because we did two videos. One, yeah. the volume was turned off or it went dead on my microphone. But yeah, there's a lot that, um, we have a lot that that house can go on. So if you want that home and you want to put it on a lot and put it on an Airbnb or whatever you like, give us a call. We have a lot that we can put that house on in the forest. In the forest. Yeah. And it's just for this house. Just for that house. Yeah. That lot's okay. not available for anybody else. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Let's go this way. Oh, I didn't know we did the eyes up. Okay. Yep. Well, Bart was telling me that there's an architect talking about tiny uh, container homes and how they're just terrible to build and live in, mm -hmm. okay? So we built two of them right over here. We've got another one out in the forest. We built one in upstate New York. We've got one that sold, a 20 footer that sold here. Mm -hmm. We've got three 10 by eight by 20s that are being built right here. And we got a, two more 40 footers right here. We got a 40 footer here and another one we're gonna to start tomorrow. Right. So come in here, I wanna show you a little bit about what we're doing. So we've done, probably completed about eight or 10 container homes. <clears throat> I love how we I would like, if I had a container on, I probably wouldn't do anything but wouldn't put wood on it. I would just leave it just like that. That's the benefit of a real container home. You just leave it gnarly looking. I like them like that. Of course, we'll do anything you would like. We fasten these right on here with self-tap screws. We, we inlay these in, we self-tap them into the, into the steel. On the inside of this house, we spray. Come on, let me show you inside. You're shaking, aren't you? Is it hard to hold the phone? I just don't want the phone to die. You know how mine's been dying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All. all right, we'll do really quick. I want to show you. All right, first thing, here is this window's cut out. It's all spray foamed in here. And these, anytime you perforate these steel, this is where your place of, of water will eventually, or it's hard to, you've got to concentrate on getting these windows flashed, any openings and doors. 
of course, that's where you're going to be losing any or gaining any kind of water inside. We flash these. We put them inside. We'll flash over top of it again. Uh, there's wood down there on this part. There's the wood will stop right here. Then we cap this with a flashing over here, here, and we silicone and caulk. And that's just really the only thing you can do when it goes metal against metal. Is she uh, getting siding on the outside? Or what? Yeah, right here. Yep. Hey, buddy. This is Jason. Sorry, Let me show you what you're doing here, buddy. So, what we did, what we did, um, hey, let's go up in here, Amanda. Oh, you're all right, buddy. You're good. So, before we start, before we do any kind of framing, before we cut out any of the windows or anything, we spray foam it. So this is a spray foam on the metal. Mm -hmm. What the engineer is concerned about, I'm concerned about, it's just common sense. When that metal out there hits any kind of warm or cold air inside this, opposite of what it's outside, builds condensation, leaks. Mm -hmm. All right. You're in here sleeping, carbon dioxide, you're breathing, you're cooking, you're going, and all this stuff is building moisture in here. But when you do this right here, right, mm -hmm. it prevents that bridging from going over and getting wet behind you. That's why we do not use um, bat insulation, any kind of styro um, the, the fiberglass blown in, anything. It has to be spray foam. Mm -hmm. It's waterproof also. Closed cell spray foam is waterproof. We spray everything all inside the ceiling. Now it's only about a half inch to an inch, the whole house. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go in and we set the studs. And you can see the studs are not up against the steel. Right. Okay? They're not up against the steel. So what we do is we'll spray foam after all our wiring, plumbing is done, and we're all set, we'll spray foam it again. Yeah, yeah. And then we build that spray foam out. We'll put another two inches on top of that. Mm -hmm. We get it down here behind the floor, the, the sole plate. We got it away from out here. We can get behind here, the top plate, top plate. And then the ceilings, we actually do the ceilings too. And we'll go all the way across and fill this whole thing again with two to three inches of foam, uh, closed cell foam insulation. So the one thing, of course, like we talked about, is your openings. So when we put an opening, you can see here, Jason, what he did, he cut, he had to cut the steel. And then we made this frame that stuck outside of the, the container, right? Mm -hmm. So then we can put a frame around it, we wrap it with aluminum, and then we put an awning over that, over that window that sheds any water. One thing we've also learned too is we're gonna put gutters on these because mm -hmm. the actual, the roof of these have a slight arch, okay? So the water does, it's not flat. And also these roofs are not structurally sound for you to walk on and do anything on. They're real spongy, okay? Mm -hmm. The strength are in these corners. So it's solid steel in the corners, corners. The corrugated steel that's corrugated all the way around, the reason they can hold 50 million tons, it's just unbelievable what these things can haul, is because this corrugated so solid steel all the way to the end is like a big truss. Mm -hmm. And a truss system usually is webbed. They'll go, you know, they go licked like this, the whole thing. Like you see a bridge. Uh, I always love watching uh, big bridges and high rises and yeah. how it's all structurally put together. Well, that's why on a container, you can support it from that corner to that corner with no piers on the side. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is support it on each corner, 40 foot span, and fill it with 50, probably 50,000 tons, which is 100,000 pounds. And it won't, don't quote me on those numbers. Some engineer is talking. I have, it's just a massive amount of weight compared to uh, this whole house when we're done to maybe 12,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. So it's super strong, but the water, you can see how we spray foam behind here. After we've cut it all out, framed it, now we've filled all this in here. We can still get all our spray foam. See behind this two by four? Mm -hmm. We can get more right in here, Amanda. Yep. We can get more all in behind. All these two by fours, we can get behind. So we really concentrate when we're spraying this, we get all of our spray foam underneath, inside. We clean it, we vacuum it up, we get it ready to go. This house is just about ready to spray foam. When we do our water lines, you can see our water lines have to be away from the wall. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so let's say we take this. We got one in upstate New York, and uh, he's, you know, he's had it through the winter of last year, and I didn't hear of any really uh, uh, freezing pipes. The one part he did have is his water line went straight out the side. We used to do that, remember? Now we go through the floor. That way you can skirt the bottom, and it's like a regular home, and you can actually put a heater under the house if you skirt from the trailer or from your home down to the ground and it creates a, a warm room underneath the house. But we keep this water line away from the metal and we spray foam behind it so it won't freeze. Okay. All right, couple, couple things in here. You can see we still do an exhaust fan. We still do the washer and dryer box, your vents, your plugs, your switches. This is your bathroom. I like how Jason, Sometimes we'll take spray foam, we'll pull them apart like this, pull them out away from the wall, spray foam, hold it there, and the net gets solid, and that way we know we've got two inches between the water line and the steel. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. Here's a wa hot water heater tank. See, he's cut this out. I'm gonna blow it out there. And then, of course, we'll silicone, I mean, uh, spray foam around that, make sure it's nice and tight. Biggest thing, everybody, water, water, water. That's why I don't like putting any kind of perforations in the roof of this. If we have a vent, if you're living in a home or an apartment, all of your sewer vent goes out the roof and you put a boot on it where your roofs are sloped. Where you come out of a boot, comes out like that, you silicone it and you got a proper boot that keeps it from leaking. Mm -hmm. Here, we go out the side and we go out the side because I hate going through the roof. I hate, mm -hmm. I, I'll put in skylights, I just don't like doing them because it's a potential problem. This is a big bedroom. It is a big bedroom. So, our, our, our container homes are really probably, I haven't done anything really different than a floor plan like this. It usually lays out the same way. Bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, living room. Mm -hmm. And that's really- It makes the most sense. It makes the most sense. So in here you got two sconces, you got nine foot ceilings in here. Isn't nice. that great? So you can put a ceiling fan in here. And the ceiling fan, the biggest thing about a home being so long is that you've got air that needs to get back in here. Now we've got a couple homeowners. One has a fan, works perfect. The other had a fan, didn't have it, didn't seem to work that well. Um, we have to have, when air comes in, air has to go out. So you have to leave your door open. You got to have that air flowing back and forth. We'll put an inline fan, but if you lock and shut that door in the middle of the night, you're not gonna get any air. It'll just fill up with air and it won't blow any more in there. Right, right. But we have found that one mini split will work if you can allow your door to be open and it fan to circulate the air and blow back what out. What if you leave something open like that, a block up there it, You know what, Mindy, it might, and I don't know why a lot of people don't want to do that. They think maybe the bathroom, mm -hmm. for some reason, has to be closed off. If I were, I was, I would, you know what would really be nice? Put some hopper windows up there. Mm. Two hopper windows, two hopper windows, open them up like that and let the air you can't get up and see but you could close them off if you wanted to yeah you know that's a good yeah. idea yeah makes you think when it's framed like that i know it? it does yeah, yeah. I leave it open. you okay. know i always like old apartments i remember seeing in new york like them old uh they would have a door and then you have a transom right here and it actually opened above the door yes i've seen that those are cool well, they did that in my old uh, my elementary school yeah and they would have windows up top that you open they take a allows stick that of, heat to go yeah through. exactly so they'd have it in all the classrooms because they had all the glass all the way around and they'd have windows that they you know what we have forgotten about uh what do you call it passive solar or passive heat mm. and cold and how it transfers and all that okay. stuff and because before we didn't have mini splits, you didn't forced air furnaces, you didn't have that stuff. Now you have it, you don't think about exactly. pushing air out, you know. No, sure so not. now, you know, we've kind of lost that way of thinking. Yeah. But everybody, okay. hey, I want to tell you, thank you for watching this show. I'm Randy Jones with Incredible Tiny Homes. If we can get 100,000 subscribers, we're going to give a house away. I'd like to reach that before the end of the year. If you'd like to tell your friends and family about this crazy place and what we're doing here in East Tennessee, Please tell them about our homegrown uh, yeah. YouTube show. Yeah. All right. So, but we are, we might be homegrown, but you know what? We are trying to make a difference in the tiny home market community in the world. Uh, and I'm going to let you go on a story like this. Y'all know Clayton Homes. Clayton's is a mobile home, uh, born and raised right here in Ten East Tennessee. Warren Buffett purchased that company a few years back. He owns Clayton Mobile Homes. He owns a lot of other things too, but... Mr. Clayton started as a hog farmer in Memphis, Tennessee. He come here to East Tennessee, started building homes in a barn. He ended up selling his home 
his whole business to Warren Buffett for X amount of billion of dollars. So you're talking about just a homegrown country boy that had just a will and a passion and a desire and a dream, and that's where and he worked. took it. Worked. Worked. Physically worked. Hard. Yeah, very hard. Uh, my hat's off. Kudos to him. Yes. Uh, over and over. I have, I have no idea how somebody could take from the barn to a multi-billion dollar corporation. That's, right. that's, uh, yeah, that's a feat and a half to yeah. be card a part of. From what I know, what we've done, and what we do here, um, it's uh, it's almost like an unrealistic dream how something like what I do could ever reach, even attain anything of a close level that way. That's not my, my it's not my ambition. But when I think about it, we're building homes, and he built homes, and all this stuff. So I wanted to tell you, you know, all my life I've never really worried about not having education. You know, I went to college and finished, and I was, had an opportunity to do that. And um, I appreciate it, but I've learned over the years, man, it is not college that makes a man or a woman smart or successful in life. It is a dream and a passion, and you got to have a desire to get up in the morning and kill it. And that's what we're doing. Get up here and kill it, and you take care of everything in your life. you got to take care of your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit. you got to take care of all that. And as you take care of that every single day, you're going to work towards whatever your goal you have, but you got to stay on it. It gets tough, but... Hang in there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you will. Come back tomorrow and then this weekend. We're going to be at the Women's Show in Knoxville. We're going to do some live interviews. We're going to be on TV. And you guys will be able to see our tiny homes. And we'll do some on, we'll do our own show over there, Amanda, won't yeah. we? Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll, we'll show you what we're show. doing and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And I'm sure I'm going to get in trouble over there. Um, as usual. It's going to be all ladies and things. Yeah. I'll probably say something stupid. Have a good night, everybody. I got a good ace. All right, bye. Ace!